Hey there YouTube, yeah, I was going to just do a quick, uh, just a quick demonstration of how I, how I charge my batteries um, from time to time, and see over on the meter here, you can see that, got about one volt, pretty much bang on, one volt in the battery, yeah, and all I do is get my power supply, and that's the minimum it can get down to anyway, it's 1.38 there, look. So I put that on there. Right, so. Try and do it in such a way that it doesn't. And I put that like that. That's a little bit too high. So let's turn this. It's current now. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's like at the same sort of voltage as what was on actually on the battery. What we want to do now is just give it a little bit of a little bit of current. The voltage of a little bit. I think it's about 25, 25 milliamp. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. And then that'll go down. I'll be keeping a check on the battery. But as that goes down, I mean, if it starts going up uh, too hard, like it's shorting out, then we know we've got a problem. And that will start sort of settle and go down. We should move all these wires and things out of the way here. Just leave that there. I'm not going to uh, video the whole thing. But this battery is like, you know, it's supposed to have like 1.5 volts in it. So. Need to keep a bit of a check on that actually, it's not. It's not doing as I expected. I'm just making sure that it's not just getting over warm quick or anything silly like that. Um, I'll just give it like you know 30 seconds, keep a check on it like that, and then I'll just I'll just basically just leave it. And what we find after an hour or so is that the the battery is getting more more charge on it. I wouldn't advise, you know, just to do this and then leave the batteries. It's not such a good idea. But if you're sat in the room, you know, um, and you're observing, then it's not so bad. Or if, if you were to put it in a, a jar, a glass jar, just so it's insulated you know, against anything else like paper in the jar, of course, if it's a glass jar, you can see what's going on inside. If it starts to um, have anything detrimental going on with it, uh, a good one is just to keep an eye on the temperature. I do some with my nine volt batteries as well. The ones that are in these, uh, the one that's in that little, this one came with it, so that's still good. That hasn't been charged, but the one that's in here has been charged a few times, and the one that's in the, um, this has been charged few times as well. It needs to be charged again actually so I think we were getting that on. I probably do just turn it up a little bit so now that it's not um, that's too high. Let's see if it starts coming down again first.
because basically as this gets more charge in it that should drop down as it gets down low enough just turn up a little bit more until you get to your desired voltage which on this is going to be you know like one and a half volts so I have to put just a little bit higher than one and a half volts into it um, I've not had one go funny on me yet uh, but then I have had um, a battery go wrong in my keyboard where it leaked and that could have been down to charging them like this I mean they're so cheap now and they really aren't they batteries I don't even know why I'm charging so I don't really need it it's the, the white the, my keyboard <coughs> keyboard's rubbish 50 quid keyboard it doesn't need it Right, so I'm just going to leave that there for a little while till I start seeing that come down. Once it gets down to like, you know, sort of below 35, then I'll just turn it up a, again a little bit. I just started off really low, just in case it's going to do anything, you know, dodgy. While I'm just keeping an eye on it. Keeping an eye on the temperature. Then we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, we're still going there. The battery has gone up to 1.45. We're still pulling in 45 milliamps. Still cold. Let's uh, just take this off for a second and do a quick. Let's not let the two magnets jump together. Eh? And of course, this will drop down a bit. Um, I'm just going to look at the initial thing. It was on one volt, wasn't it? Pretty much dead on. 1.4 like I say it will drop down a bit you see the voltage over there like 1.7 probably a little bit too high at 1.5 and just keep it going Four volts now. It's dropped down to 11 milliamps. So you can see that. You can. So if I just turn that back up very slightly. Okay, it's uh, right there. And just, I just keep it going like that. It's not gonna, um, you know, sort of charge at full blast. It will certainly allow me to put these two batteries that came out of my heating system, uh, not even allowing the LED uh, display to light up. Not light up as in backlit, I mean just the LEDs, the LCD, sorry, LEDs, duh. the LCDs. But it'll at least give me, um, you know, a couple of few months. Uh, with those in there again. Right. Well, I have to download package files. Well, my Linux system is giving me a bit of a pain in the backside in a minute, so I'm going to go and attend to that. And I'll come back to this in a little bit. Okay, so our battery is now at 1.5, just flicking on to 1 volt, and it's dropping down to 35 milliamp carrying in. <coughs> I don't know how long it's been um, charging I've just done the final part and rendering now of the Hubson um, reassemble in the new shell that's taken some time and that's fact that was quite exhausting not changing out the Hubson that was lovely that was a nice little task but I did forget something and I may have to put them in 
little bits of foam but we'll see uh, so that's taken some time because one the bloody camera two there's 32 sections of film and most of them are a gig each crazy <laughs> uh, what with the camera turning off and running out of charge and uh, life my god anyway so and this is it you know this is it's not warm at all it's cold to the touch oh just when i pick it up or touch it no but when i pick it up that's probably because of the connection it gets a bit better or worse and then i'll do this one uh, I'll let that go up to like one point, probably about 1.6, then take it off. Then I should be good for about 1.4, 1.4 and a half volts in that battery. But it'll be good to go back into the controller uh, display thing, like I said. But that's how I do it, that's how I charge these little batteries. Yeah, it's not so good charging a single pencil battery, that's a bit rubbish really. Uh, but when you're doing your, like, your 9 volt batteries, PP3s, then uh, it's you know it's more beneficial, cost-effective, whatever. And it's not costing me anything anyway, is it? Because it's a solar power pack, power supply coming off the batteries that have taken in some sun today, and I've already managed to charge uh, two batteries in my controller and two batteries for my quadcopter from my solar batteries. So I'm you know more than happy with how all that works. Blooming great. Right, I shall come back in a little bit when I take this off and uh, then I'll leave it the battery to stand for at least an hour. Then we'll do a voltage check on the battery and see what we actually have got in there. See you in a bit. So it's probably about another 45 minutes later now. And we're up to 1.53 volts. Down to 29 milliamps going in. It's not warm at all. And the battery is slowly charging up. I'll probably have to turn it off now and leave it because I need to go to bed. It's only 20 past 10, but I'm completely exhausted. Started again tomorrow. So it's still, still charging, it's cold to the touch, no overheating issues at all. The current is dropping, the voltage has gone up, it's just flicking between 
159.60 and the battery is slowly being charged some could say you know that well, well where's the point where you can buy batteries cheap enough but it's not really an argument whether it's the point of whether it's worth charging it or not this is the sort of thing you do in a situation let's say you've got no money a lot of people uh, these days find it hard to make ends meet and if you have got a way of doing this especially as whatever powers going on in here I'm getting it from the Sun so it's not costing me a penny um, and like I said earlier on, it is more efficient. It's a, a better thing to do when you're using a, a 9 volt battery. Unfortunately, mine are all charged at the moment. I did have one, I found one the other day, but in amongst doing all the things I have to get on and do, I seem to have misplaced it. Otherwise, I'd put the 9 volt battery on and show you that you can do the same thing with the 9 volt battery. I have not actually tried doing two cells at a time and the reason why I haven't done that is because um, with my other batteries, rechargeable batteries, if they're two cells, you know, two uh, 3.7 volt jobbies, there's a balance sense wire and of course I'm not quite sure how all the mechanics of that works and just for the sake of doing this sort of thing I'm not even really going to get into it because Generally, I've got rechargeable batteries um, that I use, and so I don't really need to do the pencil batteries so much. But for the 9 volt batteries, it comes in really handy, and also for the bigger 6 volt lantern batteries. Now, I've only done this once, and that was for a friend of mine, um, but he damaged the lantern and threw the whole thing away much to my uh, disappointment because I said to him I wouldn't mind to have the battery and keep it but so as you can see uh, we're still going to be charged now I'll leave that still for a little while longer if I disconnect here you'll see that I'm actually putting in around about 1.7 volts but I don't automatically start off with that well it says 1.8 now that's because I have made slight adjustments just to um, ensure that it's pushing in uh, power because you've got to have you know more going in than what you want to be stored in there obviously there's no point you putting it on 1.5 and expecting to have 1.5 in here when I when the um, current has pretty much gone all the way down you know, once it's under sort of like 20 milliamp that's it I, I can't bother anymore but I won't push this up much higher um, than the 1.8 at all anyway and if I did it would probably be not really realizing so I might try and tweak that up so it says like 1.62 or something and of course when I take it off it probably says 1.84 or something like that oh of course that is one problem with the magnets, it's, um, they do work really well. I, I did start off, you know, I used to put a piece of wire on the end and just uh, or just pull these back and put tape across there, but it's uh, these little uh, hard drive batteries. Uh, they're really, really good for that sort of thing. So, and that's how I charge up the batteries. I'll do it again at a uh, later stage with a 9 volt battery um, but just for the sake of this I think I'm going to pretty much call this a day because I've got there's quite a lot of uh, little clips now, it's probably about 7 or 8 of them I'm just going to join together and probably make a 10 minute video and it's probably going to be quite boring but you'll get to see you know, how the voltage goes up and, uh, and how the current comes down as it's going in there and what I'll do is I'll disconnect this leave it off for an hour or so so it just settles down chemically and then take a reading on the meter and see exactly what's in there but I'm suspecting what you're going to see even if I did the reading right now is you're going to see 1.58 on the battery but it won't really be 1.58 okay, that'll just be with the chemical reaction doing what it's doing
I should actually just demonstrate that, shouldn't I? Rather than just say it and expect you to take my word for it. Just put that on. Disconnect. Disconnect. There you go. 1.6. Well, that's going to drop down a little bit. And then maybe I should leave this off now for an hour the way it is. As you can see over there, look, we've got 1.8 on the power supply. Uh, and then and then check it out in an hour once it's just settled. Because that will drop down a little. There's some resistance in here as well. It's probably taking a little bit of power out of there. And then it's time to charge the next one, which should be around about again a volt. So that's got like a hundred millivolts uh, more power than what that one had. So I can put this on. Now I don't really want 1.8 going in there because you watch this. If I put 1.8, well that's not so bad. 62. Yeah. We go away with that, and as that six, uh, 63 uh, milliamps drops, the voltage goes up. So, I'll have a little look in an hour. What time is it then? Have a look at a little look in an hour at this one and see how far that's dropped, and see how far that one's gone up. What the difference is between this 1.78, 1.28 now, and 0 0.064 milliamp. Um, I'm not exactly comfortable with the way this is going up as quickly as it's going so I'm going to turn this down a little bit more and just keep it around the lower number uh, that's probably a little bit too far down well, I much prefer even though it's not getting warm or anything I still much prefer if it's um, just goes in there a little bit more gently because what can happen is there we go I'll keep it like that for a little while for about an hour because what can happen as I've noticed is uh, all of a sudden it can act like a bit of a short circuit because it's just going too quickly I mean I don't know if that's exactly true I don't know enough about how the batteries work all I know so far, when I've been doing this sort of thing, I've kept it um, reasonably safe by doing it the way I've been doing it, and so I, I tend to stick for that. The way I did have it in my head at one stage was don't try and put more than 10% in as to what is already there, like if 1 volt, 1.1 volt, um, but that probably doesn't really read true on anything or actually make any uh, sense to somebody who knows about charging batteries but I do try and just um, rather than turn on full pressure and put it in uh, just gently gently and it will equalize itself out anyway so I just turn that down a little bit and it's just dropped it down to 0.028 as you can see yourself um, I won't mind so much if that goes up a little bit uh, in an hour's time and I just know that everything's fine. Oh, I don't know how long it's been. Not that long, 20 minutes, but let's have a quick look at what's on there still. What was it before? 1.6, was it? Okay, look, as I said, it'll be going down for itself, so it's 1.56. And if it's anywhere between sort of like 1.45 and 1.5, then I'm happy with that. It's near enough for fresh battery. So as you can see now, look, it's um, 1.38 on the supply there. It's probably about the same on the battery, and it's pulled it down. It's already got 16 milliamps going in now. So now, so what's it say? 1.39, so let's say it's probably about 1.4, 1.2, okay, 1.43. So 
but let's just turn that up a little bit to 1.6 put that back and then we've got 35, 36 Now again, I'll just leave that until it starts going down again until I notice it. So I'm just going to turn this up a little bit now. 1.45. Probably got about 1.6. Oh, let's go. 1.66. I'm going to turn it up to. Yeah, that should give enough of a boost. I probably should have wrote it down, shouldn't I? What was on it? It was 1.56, was it? And it was going down still? But it shouldn't really hold more than 1.5 anyway, so. There we go. 1.51. Let's call it 1.5 on this battery. And we'll just give that a little bit more time. Okay, so it's been probably about I don't well I don't know how many hours because I went out for about two and a half hours to fly my kite uh, my quad kite it's me electronic kite um, and so I switched it all off I don't like the idea of you know, leaving this sort of thing going if I'm not going to be around to supervise it just in case. Um, so it says we've got 1.6 over there. So let's just check this one that we did earlier. It was, I think it was just a tad over 1.5, wasn't it? Let's have a little look at this. You can see that meter kind of. 1.48. So it looks like this is. It looks like it's going up there. And that's what I expected to sort of balance her around about to about 1.5 because really I mean just to even a rechargeable battery takes a good while um, like up to 16 hours I think in one of the charges I've got I, I leave the batteries on overnight so these I've not had nowhere near as that and I know that um, is that leaking no and I know that um, even with my quad batteries, if I don't let them fully, fully charge, even if I take them off when they're on like 8 point, let's say 8.37, they're not as good. They ha you know, the amount of capacity isn't as much as it may say to start off with. It's got the right voltage, but I don't get as much time. I get about 16 minutes, 17 minutes rather than 19, 20 minutes with them. So let's take that off. And that's about right, 1.8 volts, because I've adjusted it up. But this is going to say higher anyway, because it takes the time before it goes down. But it's definitely charged. It's definitely charging up, you know, even in a short space of hours. Uh, it's definitely charging up. Um, so it goes to show, you know, that you can charge these batteries, the non-rechargeable ones. It's probably not the safest thing to just leave them unattended because it does stipulate somewhere. I've seen it on non-rechargeables, but I'm not charging them up. But you can do it. Um, but it is. Uh, this is my virtual private network. People beeping at me. I'm people filming. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, just to conclude, you can, um, you know, I, I've been doing this for quite a while. Mainly, not so much for these, but uh, mainly with the uh, the, the uh, nine volt square batteries, you know, as it comes in handy, especially you know, for these things. This one's got the battery that came in with it. This is a uh, this is a freebie I got sent by Rigel UK. But um, this one's got a recharged battery in it. This one's got a recharged battery in it. I have to do this one quite a bit, because especially when I was using it a lot more. And uh, But now as I can get off the quad stuff now, I go back to building electronic circuits. I will be using that one a lot more. And uh, 
Um, I'm not sure when I do that one, but it was just uh, some I was asked. Well, you know you are, Mr. Bunny at home. Um, and that's it. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. I just don't. I just don't overpower it. You know. I just don't whack it in straight away. The uh, 1.8 volts into a 1.5 volt battery. Start off with it low. Let it just build up a little bit. Just keep a check on the heat. I've not had any problems in the so far getting warm or anything like that. Um, and that's it. And if it does go up really high in current, just disconnect it because it's it's not doing what it's supposed to. Supposed to just take it in bit by bit, nice and gentle. Cheers for watching. Bye.